Welcome to this workshop uh, called More Than Rest, um, because that's where we're heading in general, I would say, in the in the direction or in the field of API management. It's it's not only a, a REST focus, yes, SOAP was already there uh, for the past few years, but it's moving on and, and I want to give you an idea how that can look and, and what to look for, but not only the, say, the simple task of exposing an endpoint, but then also what was surrounded in managing that because, um, I guess that's that's in essence the the bigger challenge um, to get that done. So what I'll do is I'll just set the scene quickly, uh, say three four uh, minutes, and then I, I really want to show you in in the demo um, how how to expose an API, how to secure it, how to manage it, and 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 get along through its its life cycle of hopefully a long time and not a a one or two weeks uh, adventure to realize that people are not using the API. So what are we looking at? We're looking at an API management solution called API Connect that consists of the components that are highlighted here with with bold letters um, in the in the center or the brain of the solution is the API manager. That is where you define your APIs, um, assign the policies, um, define the uh, the plans or contracts, depending uh, what your background is, you, you'd have used uh, one of these terms. And then, when you're happy with the with the API that you've that you've created, in in our view or in our world, um, you you create a plan, a plan, uh, a plan, a product. Sorry, assign a plan to that which is corresponding to the contract that, that I've mentioned before, and then you publish that product. Now. While publishing uh, such a product, two things happen. One is obviously one um, that the product gets published to the gateway, so the API gateway knows what to enforce at runtime. But at the same time, the API becomes, or the the product rather, becomes uh, visible in the developer portal, which is then the interface actually for the app developers to subscribe to the API and then start developing their application. Um, and, and hopefully using your API a lot. Now, if you if you have a successful API, that brings some challenges. Obviously, if if at runtime your your um, load gets high, you want to protect your backend. So, I'll also get into the this uh, area to see what levels we offer you to protect um, the your backend. And, and there are various levels. To be honest, um, I would be surprised to see anyone using all of them. But it, it's it's good to know it's there. It's kind of having a toolbox and, and being ready for any kind of situation that you that you need to apply the right tool to that situation then. And then last but not least, there is a developer toolkit that can be installed locally. Um, there are two flavors of it. One is a, a designer uh, tooling that's a, a native install, say on a Mac or on a Windows machine um, that connects directly to the API manager. So you're working uh, actually on the API manager itself. But there's also a, a, a lightweight version where you can install a gateway and a API manager stripped down to run locally on your machine. So you can have this, say, unit test level um, experience of, of creating an API on your workstation before, before even going and publishing uh, that API to the API manager. Now, there's one special aspect to consider or to look at is the top, the top three uh, elements uh, are, are named in this in this area called management, and the API gateway and the analytics are in this lower area, which is called a uh, runtime. And that's the specific reason at runtime the API gateway doesn't need a, connect, a connection to the API manager, which which I feel is is good, because then if something should happen to your API manager, it goes down. The APIs will still serve. Um, to the applications, the client applications, and, and there's no impact at that at that point. Analytics data will still be collected, and then once the API manager is up, that analytics data will be presented to the say API manager or product manager, depending on on how these roles are 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 cut and sliced um, accordingly. Speciality in the whole setup is if you have an environment installed with all the components, um, there is a logical separation besides the physical separation, which most of our clients do mainly in a non-prod and prod environment. But then 
within these installs you have this logical separation which is called a, an organization or a provider organization that is where you create your your apis in and these these um organizations are really separated so people can be completely isolated while working within such a provider organization and they don't see uh, what other people do in in uh, other organizations unless obviously they are a member of both organizations so they can have different roles in in different organizations and 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 live there their um say uh, dual life in 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 those organizations within an organization sits a catalog or one or more catalogs actually uh, a catalog is is a logical uh, unit uh, again to to hold all the apis that you want to publish into one developer portal so with the catalog comes the developer portal and as good that, as it is at the same time it brings some challenges because uh, you might have uh, different units that feed into the same catalog, different needs in that sense on on who should see what. And that's where the, the top layer comes in, which is the spaces. You can see spaces as a, uh, let's say, subfolder in the whole um, uh, setup that allows multiple teams separately, separated from each other to feed into one catalog for you to have one, one face to the outside, which is then your developer portal. Um, me as an API consumer, actually, I don't care who's providing those APIs from from an organizational point of view within the enterprise. But obviously, I care about being being a, a complete set of APIs that is offered to me, and and that's the goal of the whole thing. So we serve these API consumers, and and there are all these uh, say measures to to allow that that setup to happen uh, accordingly. That these API consumers can can use those APIs accordingly. And in general, I would say there are three flavors of, of API consumer communities. One is a public one where you have no clue who's, who's using those APIs. So um, they would uh, come to the portal, register uh, in a self-service way, uh, start subscribing to your APIs and use it. And then you only see what's happening. There's the B2B scenario where you know, uh, for example, with the business partner, um, you know the, the people that would, would be interacting uh, with with you and and for them you can pull up a dedicated portal or a, a cat, create a catalog and then have the portal in it and um, and they will see what they are uh, meant to see can also create specifics for them so um, that is one approach and then obviously the 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 most commonly uh, started point is is the internal ones where where APIs are, are started being shared internally and and that can be for various uh, on various levels of of um say um apis in in terms of rather system level apis so for automation purposes but then it can also go into into um other apis that then start exposing business data as well so um you have all the flavors in there and i'll take you through a yeah it, it's rather a sprint through through the whole thing than than a deep dive that we can do with the time we have and for the demo, it's really a, a simple scenario. Create a REST API, secure it with the client ID secret, show how easy it is also to, to leverage OAuth, um, where there's a speciality I'll, I'll get to. I'll, I'll put myself to a challenge of, of exposing a, a, a SOAP service as a REST API in five minutes. And then I'll also show how our, our GraphQL um, implementation looks in the um, in the product now let me switch to my browser and you just please give me a shout if you don't see my browser right now so this is our developer portal as it comes out of the box um, once you've installed it you create an instance um, this is how it looks, empty, and you want to, um, yeah, give it some life. This is the API manager, as I said, the, the brain of, of, of all. Um, this is where I create my APIs in a role, obviously, um, that is, is defined here. Here I'm, I'm an administrator, and I'm at the same time also the owner of this uh, provider organization, so I can really do anything I want in here. and. Um, I'll make use of that. So let me start by 
adding an API. I'll say I have a target service that I know. Um, I'll give it a title. And there is a service I, I like. I, I'll use that one. It's called random user. So as it says, it really generates a user for me um, randomly. And that allows me to then create this API, I'll just leave these defaults. And basically what I've done now is created um, the API definition, which is secured with the client ID. Uh, the security definition section here just points me or, or shows me what uh, security measures I can use. In essence, the security measures I use is the security uh, tab or view where I then check this client ID that it is really used as such. Now the path I know for this one, I'll need to adapt this. I have a, a fine grain control here also, obviously, or obviously um, uh, with a very good reason to, to not expose any, any other operation than the one that I want. Um, this has been now a, a very, say, painful process to click through. Uh, the other option would be to go to the second view that I get on the on the API, which is the source view. Just let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see something. Um, and and this is just really a, a YAML file, nothing else. Um, no, no, say, magic happening. And let me just, for sake of the fun of it, just delete the base part. And, and this will be reflected in the, in the design view as well. So it's really about which style is, is pleasing the, the API developer more than, than anything. You can work in those two views. Properties allows me to, to create variables like this target URL, which is my, my service. So if I have multiple catalogs where I do maybe a staging, I can define the different values for the different catalogs that I want. So I can point for the, the, the non-prod catalogs would point to a test instance of that, that service as soon as I get into a pre-prod or QA environment. I go to a production uh, like state of the of the backend service as well, so that is there. Uh, that's available for me, and I can I can expand this um, um, yeah properties to my liking. Target service will come into play for the soap service. I'll I'll show you that categories um, is really for a documentation purpose. I can start building up a hierarchy here, and then last but not least, activity log really tell allows me to set what should be logged um, when using this um, API in a normal way or what happens, uh, what, what logs should be taken if an error uh, should occur. Now, there's a third view, which is the assembly view, kind of a, a flow, flow designer in that sense with, with a set of policies here on, on the left. These policies are uh, pre-populated by us, but then you can also start creating your own here on the bottom left, you see user defined. So if you should have a backend system with a very specific uh, uh, authentication towards it or a special data format that can be created or developed on the gateway itself, that's an additional step to take. I'll be honest on that. But then once that is done, that can be imported and provided as a reusable asset here as well. And then it becomes easy. Um, to, to just pull it in versus reinventing the wheel um, every time. Now, the invoke policies here um, just has the target URL. I'll just add the path that I have defined because I know that's that's needed for the, for the service I'm calling. Once I'm happy, I set the, the API to online and at that point, at that moment in this um, navigation, two elements become active. One is the endpoint, which is the gateway. Uh, I'm, gener I'm, I'm having a generated client ID and, and client secret from a, from a test app that I, I use. There's also a default rate limit set and that I can then use here in this uh, test client. So if I said that, it provides me again with with a meaningful result, make this bigger again. Um, additional ele elements here, I get to view the headers that, that were being used. Uh, sorry for the colors on that, but, um, and then there's a, a tracing um, option 
which which allows me then to to get down to the details of of these now with with just an invoke policy it doesn't make much sense uh, to have that but if you have a a flow that takes more steps and there might be something wrong on the say on the journey that that helps a lot now at the same time when i set the api online it actually got published as a as a so called auto product here in the, in the developer portal as well so from this point on, I can start looking at what the, the API consumer experience is, is in my catalog and, and check what they get presented with. So they get the, the end point here as well. Um, they see different snippets um, depending on the language they prefer. And, and this is configurable. So if it's internal, I, I, I guess this would be restricted to some, say, standardized um, uh, code languages. If it's for public, you, you'll allow all of them to have a, say you have an open mind in the perception of your API consumers. And if I'm if I'm happy with the API, I can try it um, to which I, I need to subscribe. This is one thing I've prepared. I've already set up a consumer. And once that consumer is in, he creates an application, he or she creates an application, and then I can say, I subscribe to that um, API product with my application, and from this point on, I'm good to go and 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 test that um, API. So similar, I I get to try it, and all goes well. Yes, here is my my generated user with the French name in a very strange time zone. If you look at that. Uh, French name, Swiss address, uh, time zone in, in, in South America, I guess that would be challenging to, to make sense of this. But again, it's a sample and uh, from that point of view, still very helpful if you're testing and you need some, some user data. Now, that's all good, but I, I want to actually uh, use OAuth as a security uh, credential now. I'll go in and create a new version and our standard reflex is to say, yeah, let's make it a 2.0, but maybe I want to make it an ABC. I can do that. Um, the flexibility is given there. And here I then have the, uh, in the security definition section, I can just go in and say, add, I'll give it the very long search name all. Here I define the flow and where this comes from, I'll show you. Um, here I have the scope that's called API days. I'll save that. And as I said before, I need to say I want to apply that security definition here as well with the scope. Otherwise, uh, nothing will happen. And that API won't be um, enforced in that way. Now, here again, if I say I'll set this, this online, um, in the background, it's, 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 it's being published. To the portal as a product here the, the invoke still looks the same the endpoint will more or less look the same uh, besides that here i now get a what's talking url display and then in the test tab i won't see any difference but here comes the value of the of the portal because what i can do now here is and there is my newly published um, api or let me subscribe to that again. That application is going to have a lot of subscriptions. And once we're done, I can test this one. And now this this time I need the client secret. So yes, being being a bit sloppy, I I, I forgot that. And and the good thing about the whole self-service approach is really me as an API consumer, I can go in um, and then yeah what to do, reset my client secret. I'll do that now for the sake of being able to test. I'll just copy that, verify the secret, go to this. And here I see already my, my both my subscriptions displayed for my application that I've created. I have the da dashboard view as well, which shows me the analytics of what I've been doing in, in recent times. So. Uh, I have a different time scales to look at 
my last hundred calls or not mine, but the applications and then the last hundred errors. So if I see this is filling up pretty quickly, then I, I get an idea that something with my app might be wrong and, and I, can, I can react to that. But now assuming and hoping that this is not, not the case, I will go in here. Now this time I have my client secret. I'll paste that in. I'll give this credentials to be fair. This will work. So I get the token here and I can call the API again with someone new, coincidentally living in Switzerland again, but this time being in the in a, in a Thai uh, time zone. So, so these are the two um, ways to secure the API, one's client ID, client secret if needed, and OAuth is the second one. Now comes my my challenge. I'll I'll keep an eye on on the time. Um, if I can if I can stay in in those five minutes now. If I want to expose a soap service as a REST, this is this one of the options. Um, we do also allow to um, expose soap as soap. Just if if someone still hasn't uh, been able to adapt the the client application, so um, especially in a B two B. A scenario this can be uh, still valuable so i say next i have to pull in a whistle there is a public service which provides a calculator so i've, I've taken the the whistle from there i say next say next say next again and this has happened under the hood without me doing much as you've seen, I've really just imported the the um, whistle, and this has been created, but generated rather um, automatically. Some would say automatically, but but um, this is really um, what happened. So it has created the different operations. So add subtract, uh, add subtract, multiply, divide, with with get and post operations allowed for these, and each one has a parse, which means this is the input. Um, that is taken from from the request um, a JSON that will then be mapped with a graphical mapper. I can also have this shown and, and displayed to me in different ways. Um, as I, as I like to see these, um, can always adapt this view as well. But um, let's stay in a in a bigger one for this. And then the backend service is invoked. You see here in the bottom uh, the service name. Again, the response is passed. That is then mapped back to a, a JSON, which is then also the response. So if I go for this and give it a second or two, again, to, to show up here in my, my portal, there it is. Again, I'll have to subscribe. with my favorite application in that sense. So here I've got all the, the operations now. Again, luckily this, this presents me some, some payload um, and even better, I can generate some now for me to, to understand if the service works, let's keep it simple. Uh, so I have an idea if, if my math is still, is still okay and still keep it a bit challenging. So this looks good. Now, this is one part of the story. As I said before, if something should go wrong, um, we would then be happier about this, this test capability where we see here, um, there's a body already in there. Um, now I have, the, I have the result, looks good, but now I have this one, which will give me the details of what has happened step by step. So here I can really go into, I know it's it's very, very small now in the bottom, but um, for the sake of viewing both together, I've, I've, I've reduced the size, but here I can really step through. I've, I got all the information that passes through uh, the gateway um, for me to, to check really if something has gone wrong that I can figure out where the possible uh, causes of this error. And this is, 
the benefit of having having this view in here really if if these flows get a bit longer a bit more complicated with switches and all on and different conditions then it's it's very helpful to have this um aspect of of debugging um the service and i guess it was less than 5 minutes including all the the explaining so i would be um arrogant enough or or yeah to say uh the challenge has been uh, successfully completed. Now, last but not least, there is a the upcoming or the rising uh, requirement and, and need to, to expose GraphQL. GraphQL is very powerful in that sense, being a, a query language. I'm just copying the URL from my cheat sheet, which you cannot see, but I'll, I'll give this one a name, paste in the... Hey, Morali. Yeah. Quick question came through the chat. Does an API 3.0? Yes, it does. And I'll, hang on, I'll, I'll just go back. So here is a, a second tab that allows you to, to um, either import or, or create um, open API 3.0 3 from, from this same uh, screen. Now, everything that I'm showing you is, is in essence an API call. So this whole UI um, is doing nothing else but, but um, issuing API calls towards the API manager. So the whole thing can be driven by, by uh, pipelines, not opening these consoles once if you want that. But obviously for a, for a demonstration, it makes sense to use the, the UI here, which by the way, um, we have won awards for, which is not what we as a company have been known for. And I can say that um, having been with, with the company now for 14, 15 years though. So yeah, I was at this point adding this, um, it gets me the, the schema, it warns me here, I'll get to the, that warning later on. Again, same step, getting through. And here, at this point, I have this um, GraphQL schema as an element added. And now, if I look at, increase the size first again, and then look at these, it says, yeah, it it uh, returns an unbound list. And here, it, it, it advises me to, to um, limit the size to 10. So let me do this. And similarly, again, I can start publishing this. And here again, in the test tab, I get to, to um, test GraphQL. Again, it's a query language. If you know um, the queries accordingly, um, you could do harm. But now this one is not allowing me as I'm querying the credit card. Then let me try if this one turns out, turns out better. Yeah, so here I'm getting getting payload and I'm seeing here also what the query limits are. Um, let me see if I can query other stuff, which should still allow me to, to get that um, information and, and it does. So as long as I don't go for a credit card, everything's okay. And here similarly again, um, below this, this um, representation of the flow is, is shown to me with the details if I need that. And needless to say, um, the product is, is here. Again, I'm in a sandbox environment where this um, publication happens automatically. In a, in a non-sandbox environment, you, you'll you have um, uh, control over all these um, publishing events. Um, and, and here, it already complains because I don't have a subscription. But in essence, the test client is, is provided to me, and I can test it as well uh, from, from the portal. Now, having said that, I'm, I might be, um, again, not in, a, not in a sandbox environment, so what do I do? First of all, there is one aspect which is, I would say, well hidden, but here is a first rate limit that you can set across all consumer organizations. So that means 
if you have a, a developer portal with 10, 20, 50 consumer organizations, there is a limit that you can set now. That would be rather something where you say, I want to keep it on a per second level um, to maybe protect my, my um, infrastructure. It can be that you just say, no, I, I think uh, on a per day basis, we can only cope with as many calls as there are. And, and you define that here. So that's place number one uh, to rate limit. If you've done that, yeah, let it complain. Um, there's this packaging of APIs into products. Now I'll create my products, call it API days. Here I have a versioning on its own. So products have its version, APIs have its own version, and I can start selecting which APIs I want to combine as a product. There are ways and, and, and uh, many ways of, of, of packaging products. I've seen, I've seen customers doing one product with 78 APIs. It becomes very um, painful to navigate in the portal. The customer has, has changed that now and, and gone to splitting them up a bit more meaningful because 78 usually uh, don't have the same, say, use case or business value attached to it. So, it makes sense to group them accordingly. I'll just leave this default plan as it is for now. Um, yes, I want to publish the product. And here comes something which is uh, also very powerful, um, setting the visibility so who can see it. If I set it to public, if I go to the portal, I'm not logged in, I can see what, what um, API products are, are published. I can say, I only want to show this to authenticated people that means I have to be logged in to see it. Similarly, who can subscribe to a, an API? Um, I can set that to authenticated or then to custom. And custom means I can really define single consumer organizations or groups of co consumer organizations that, that I can previously group together, be it by, by region, be it by discipline, be it by business they're doing, um, and then just say, I want this, and then in consequence, I similarly have to say, I want this consumer one to subscribe to this, and then, or to be able to subscribe to this, I have to say, in all fairness, and now it's being published. So if we give this a second or two or three, this, this API product is being published. I'm still here as a consumer one. And here is my, my newly published product with all the APIs in it. And I see here a pretty generic uh, plan attached with 100 calls per hour. Could, in my consideration, could be much or, or less depending on, on what I want to use it for. But this I can subscribe to now. If I switch, and I, I log in now with consumer two. I do not see this this product offered to me as a as a possible uh, subscription. I can another option is to make it visible to everyone, but subscribable only to to a subset of people. But this can be used um, sometimes for A/B testing. Some some customers use it to have regional. Um, APIs published to, to um, their internal teams, for example, if you have a, a dedicated set of APIs for, for one country, then you really just show it to those people from, from that country, or people, sorry, to the consumers from that, that country. So um, they can only um, access it accordingly and, and um, use those. Now, having said that, the visib visibility is one aspect. Um, the other one is, the APIs that I want to select, I can always go here and, and say later on, I want to increase those. But with the plans, there is a, a multitude of, of settings I can do. Billing integration in terms of monetization can be, can be done. Um, so you can create plans with a five-day free trial, and then you start billing, uh, say, five euros uh, per month via credit card. There is a checkbox, which is very very helpful for plans to say i want to have an approval step built in so whenever someone subscribes to this plan it will generate a task for me in the api manager 
um, to approve that that subscription i have a a rate limit for the plan overall that's fine i can start building up my say my cascade of of different um different um rate limits that i want to group together i have a burst limit which is really what i define to say um uh, protect my my um, my back end i know let's be let's assume we have a very powerful one i can do 10 10000 um calls per second but i know that's the max so i'll add that graphql has its own own uh, limits the assembly again this is for for graphql as well here the same and then i can even go down and say i want to start setting limits on a per api and per operation base so you have the full list of of apis that you can or, or operations where you can set sorry for that different different rate li uh, rate limits and um i'll just say i'll be very rude so every two hours i can do only two calls and then i can start building up this this kind of plan but this um yes it's technically possible is it always meaningful useful that is then up to you to decide if you want to um to um uh, go down that route or maybe you create a new version with a different with a different plan uh, added to it now having created the this this product i have two options again here to publish and preserve subscription or just publish and then all the existing subscriptions will be lost i'll just do publish and preserve here I decide which catalog uh, to publish to, and as multiple gateways can be attached to one catalog, I can even have a fine-grained control on which gateway I want to publish to. Um, if I don't select anything here, it will just publish to all the gateways that are attached um, or assigned to such a catalog. Having done that, um, it I have now a published um, a product, but within within this catalog, where I can see, first of all, what have I published? Who are my consumers? What applications are they using? I can, from here, I can either reset credentials if they call and say, hey, uh, sorry, my credentials are not working. I've tried it in the portal, I don't get it done. Uh, you can always uh, do this, say, as a support support function. The tasks one is the one where the subscription approvals would, would come in. Analytics to get the the usage uh, data of, of all these published APIs, there is one case where you won't see anything. That is, if you don't ask for a client ID or uh, as an identification, then we'll just record that the API call has happened, but we cannot say who has used it and all that stuff. But this is then valuable in terms of, say, internal billing, um, if you want to do that. And members are then really um, who's member of this catalog and uh, the spaces won't work in the in a, in a sandbox environment but this is um the um, environment that we're managing really the the apis and then how they can be used and there are then say going further steps like deprecate retire so deprecate means the api can still be used by existing subscribers but no one new can subscribe retire means it's going to be pulled back completely Replace means I, I create a new product or I replace it by a different product, uh, but maintain the subscriptions. Um, and similarly, there are 10 more options in, in superseding uh, this uh, migration target. So if you have a new version, you can migrate subscriptions. Re in retrospect, go and change the visibility, add maybe another uh, consumer organizations, update the gateway services that you've assigned them, um, or allowed the, the API to be published to manage the APIs that are in the product it, itself, then view the subscriptions and plans, which is, in my view, an obvious uh, one. I've kept a little secret from you, which is how I, I got the auth provider or the auth um, um, setting added. This is a, a concept we, we follow as, uh, as having resources, so use, user registries, uh, TLS profiles, auth providers, and now uh, since beginning of, of this year, also billing 
um, you can define that on a on a catalog level or even on a on a space level but um, on a say whole install level on a organization level catalog level uh, and space level you have the the granularity to define everything um, every of these elements as well and and you see here this all for all is a shared um, OAuth provider. Uh, by the way, our gateway has a built-in OAuth server, so that can be an OAuth provider in its own. And um, this was created and assigned to a set of, of uh, consumer uh, provider organizations, sorry, to be used. Now, if I'm not happy with what I'm, I'm getting here, um, I can always look at it, what's the configuration, uh, but I don't, I don't have the, the ability to, to change it. I can still create my own OAuth provider for the time being to, to get around this, um, say, limitation, perceived limitation. And then once, once I'm done, maybe I, I need a discussion or two internally to get it as a standard um, within, within our company. And, and really, this is in a, in a rush through, to be honest, uh, the, the, the rather management focused uh, aspect here of, of, of this uh, solution. And I want to circle back also um, partly to give you an idea of, of where we're heading or um, how we see how we see the world. Maybe I, I, I can say that. Um, just let me get back here. Yeah, we've done the demo. Um, so this is not the end of the story. What we see is uh, more and more, sorry for that, uh, more and more, um, say, non non synchronous um, technologies coming with with Kafka with messaging. So as the API management uh, capability, the the product name API Connect, is part of our cloud pack for integration, which which contains a whole set of of um, integration capabilities. We're looking more and more at the uh, I can't say endpoint management because the term is already used for similar to device management uh, like capabilities, but let's call it integration management in that sense. So whatever um, integration artifact you have, uh, be it a, a Kafka topic, be it an MQ uh, message queue, uh, be it uh, an API to, uh, to initiate a high-speed file transfer, um, we want to be able to provide that as a, as a self-serviceable, uh, say, way of, of 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 using that kind of assets, and and that's where we're heading. Um, I, I can even say in the in the near future, without giving away too much, and keep you maybe also a bit curious. Adding to that around around the the whole thing uh, within the cloud pack for integration is a is a asset repository which allows me then to share my artifacts so people can see. Um, what has been built, not reinvent the wheel every time, and then take it from there, maybe adapt it, or if they're happy with it, just use it one-to-one. -one. And having said that, um, the governance aspect, yes, they need to have an instance where they can use it. And, and we're looking, obviously, at more and more um, yeah, complicated use case in the sense of having a management piece somewhere, having the runtime somewhere. And this is what we just... Uh, embarked on with the with the uh, launch of IBM Cloud Satellite that allows you to have a central management plane, but then have the runtimes distributed wherever you need them, be that on-prem, be it on, on the public clouds, be it on dedicated clouds, as long as you have a way of, uh, say, reaching those, those endpoints on a network level, uh, then you're good to go. So if you want to try this, get your hands on, get your hands a little bit dirty, um, here it was snowing, and, and raining and, and even hail was there outside cats and dogs more or less. Uh, so I would stay inside, maybe go to the Red Hat Marketplace, pull up an instance of the Cloud Pack for integration, 45 days free uh, for you to try. There's also uh, the labs that that can can guide you through um, experiencing these these different capabilities. So so you can see how maybe I don't know you have a an application integration component that that connects an MQ and exposes it as a as a REST API, but then while calling it, you you also can see uh, the cross component tracing that we've built into that, so you have a a, a clear view from a from a use case point what's happening with it with the transaction versus going and gather all the logs for each capability and try to find out where something has gone wrong. 
And if if you're happy with that or, or not using this, uh, which I cannot be mad at you, um, there's always an option to consume some more from us. Um, May 11th, 12th, uh, 2021, when, when think will be um, again a virtual event. Um, let's see if it's the last time that we have a virtual event or maybe uh, next year it can be a, a, a proper event, I was about to say, where we can travel again and all that. But um, this is what we're looking at to to have uh, more more news um, coming towards you in that sense. And if I'm not wrong, I'm I'm good on time, and we still have time for for additional questions. Otherwise, there's time to run to the coffee machine at home and and fill up. So I'm not seeing any any additional questions in the chat here. And if there are no no other questions, you can ask me anything about API management, about integration in general. Don't feel shy. Um, give it a second or two. Then I guess if there are really no questions, we can we can stop here. Give you three minutes, as I said, fill up a coffee before the next session start, and be refreshed um, for the rest of the day. And I hope you enjoy.